Hey guys, I hope you're all well. Today I thought I would do a bit of a makeup rehab update. I started my no buy and my general makeup rehab journey on the 15th of December 2017. It is now the 2nd of August when I'm filming this, so we're not quite at the eight month mark, but we are nearly there. I thought I would just do like a kind of generic check-in video, sort of update you guys and where I kind of am and yeah, like how I've been finding it. First of all, it has gone really well in terms of the no buy. I haven't bought anything and I'm really, really pleased with that. At the moment, it's still not a challenge. I think I'm still quite, quite stressed out by the amounts that my collection added up to and I've still, as you guys know, got things to film that I need to add into my collection. So there's been stuff getting acted on every month. At the moment, it's still not outweighed the stuff I'm using up, which is good. So it's overall going in the right direction, but like the fact I do have stuff still to add on when I haven't been buying anything has definitely been like you clearly don't need to buy anything it's okay so I'm, I'm still not struggling with not buying anything what I did get a little bit of a fright with recently is that if you guys remember in my first video if you haven't watched it if you've come to this video first um, I did do a kind of makeup resolutions video that had my sort of plan for my makeup rehab journey for this year in it so I will link that up if you want to go have a watch of that first and that'll maybe give you some context for this video. Right back in that first video I did say that for my birthday if there was things that I wanted I could ask for them and I couldn't spend my own money on them but that I would let myself get something new if somebody else purchased it for me. That happened, there was a couple of things that I wanted. Funnily enough they weren't the things I thought I was going to ask for but I'm really pleased with what I did get and I'm really grateful obviously as well that sounded really ungrateful like I'm really pleased with what I chose and um, I'm really grateful that people um, obviously were happy to gift me those things. Basically what happened was people gave me money and um, specifically to get them people knew what I was going in for but like my partner Scott his mother lives quite far out so she can't really get into Glasgow that often so she wasn't going to be able to get in to buy me the specific eyeshadow that I wanted. She just gave me money to get it. And um, my gran was like, oh, if you want that thing, if you're going in for the eyeshadow, um, here's the money for the powder. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know about these. So this is what I picked for my birthday. Um, it's the NARS Orgasm Illuminating Powder. It's beautiful. And then this is from Chantikai and it is an eyeshadow. I will film a whole video that will have them in it, that will have swatches, along with a million other things that I haven't filmed yet. So do keep an eye on those videos if you're looking for them. I absolutely love them, but I had to go through the physical act of handing the money over at the till, though it wasn't my money and it was money I was gifted specifically to buy these things. I had to buy them. And what I found was that I think I could very quickly slip back into really enjoying that moment of buying something because although I would say my mental health is really, really good now, which is obviously, if you've seen the first video, you know my mental health is kind of, was the spiral into the kind of destructive um, behaviour and the kind of addiction to wanting to make myself feel better every day by buying something. And although my mental health is really good now, I still got a bit of a rush from that moment when the bag became mine. And I noticed it, basically what happened was, the first day I bought the eyeshadow, and my Space NK points were, the eyeshadow was £42 and the Space NK points were at like say £80. Um, so once I bought the eyeshadow I was going to get a £10 reward because I'm still indulged deluxe tier with Space NK. And that expires in three months so I was like well there's no point in like getting the powder at the same time. I may as well use the reward towards the powder because there's nothing else I'm going to be buying within three months because I'm going to New York in September. So I probably, even if I wasn't doing what I'm doing, with makeup rehab I wouldn't really be buying very much in the next kind of three months anyway because August is the month before I go on holiday, the start of September I go on holiday at the end of the month and then in October I will have just come back I'm away like the last the end of September start of October so in October I'll come back and I'll spend all my money so I'll have no money for October anyway so basically there was no point in me getting this £10 reward so I was like well I'll just wait it'll go on at midnight and I'll use it the next day for the powder and because I went two days in a row, the first day I was actually okay. The first day I was fine. What I would say has definitely changed is that I was so excited to get those products home and to use them. Before I, the little high that I was getting that was making me feel better was that moment when they became mine. But as soon as they became mine, I wasn't excited about them anymore. And I would just chuck them to the side and there was something new to get. And that was the head, the mindset that I was in. Whereas when I bought that eyeshadow, 
or when I was gifted it but physically purchased it myself I was so excited to get it home and to use it and I used it really really quickly whereas I've got stuff that I bought like last year that's still sitting in a bag waiting to get filmed so I've definitely definitely changed that which I'm really excited about because I was just I was just so excited to get it home and to use it which that was never the case before so there's definite change there but the second day when I went back to buy the powder and I'd done it two days in a row I was like oh I really like this feeling I think I will potentially always have a bit of a rush at that moment when something becomes mine even though that rush now is extended and it also applies to going home and using the thing and there should be a rush if you're buying something like makeup and you're enjoying it you should be excited about it becoming yours and owning it and using it so it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing but there's a danger that that could I could slip back into that habit and I was I've been kind of looking at things about addiction because I think realistically I was addicted to buying makeup it was because of a mental health issue but the addiction itself although it was because of another issue that was an issue in itself you know and I've been looking into kind of things about addiction and like generally what people say if you've got like an alcohol addiction or a substance abuse addiction is that you just can never have that thing again like if you're an AA you spend every day trying to be sober because an alcoholic who has been addicted to alcohol is not capable of having one drink like you just don't have one and that's it because you can't do it and control it and moderation doesn't really work and that I think is so true of my personality because I have gone from buying something on a daily basis to this year I'm just not buying anything and that's fine and I'm not struggling with it because moderation doesn't work for me if I had to set a budget and stick to it and do that every month I would struggle with that and I would find ways to justify spending more than my budget every month like I know myself and I know that's what I would do whereas saying I'm just not buying anything and that's it for a whole year I can I can cope with that I can deal with that so much better than trying to set a budget and do like a little bit of something like I'm very all or nothing so moderation doesn't really work for me and I think that in combination with what I've kind of read about addiction and how you just cannot ever have the thing you're addicted to or do the thing you're addicted to doing again I, that slightly worries me I don't really have an answer I don't really have a reflection I don't really have anything to say other than that is a worry for me at the moment and the only thing I can do is kind of go forward and keep trying to be really conscious and keep setting rules and I think as well like the other kind of thing that I've realised at the moment I'm just going to give you guys the figures so I haven't done my July um, totals yet I haven't had a chance to add them up but from January through to June I have used up $2,544.20 worth of products so that's hair care skin care and makeup all in which is good and I'm happy that I've used that up but I know I've said this the entire time every time I've had a go post I'm like well it really doesn't look like anything but it really doesn't it honestly hasn't changed the size of my stash what seems like at all although I have used up quite a good amount and it's probably near three thousand dollars at the moment it, it's not really made that much of a dent into my collection so I had kind of thought already this is not going to be over in a year and don't get me wrong I hadn't thought that my behaviours were going to have magically changed within a year or anything but I did think like next year I could not have to set rules maybe about what I was going to buy or not buy but I think you know this is going to have to go forward for me in a structured way next year and I'm definitely going to do projects and no buys and things like I'm fine with it but it was a bit of a realisation because I think like although I didn't think I was just going to do a year of no buy and then go back to how I was before like I thought I was going to change my behaviour and take new behaviours forward and be a bit more conscious and um, I don't think I thought I was going to have to do a very structured program going forward but I think I probably will at least for another year potentially another year of no buy and um, because my collection is just not going down and yeah it's it's quite scary I go through a lot of skincare and I think that's helping my numbers but actual makeup is really my makeup has gone up overall so I started my makeup collection was worth $16,506.45 and as of June, 
my makeup collection is worth $16,680 and 32 cents. It's not gone up by a huge amount, it's gone up by about $100 but that's also with me using up stuff every month and I also haven't added on July which is um there's some stuff there so I got birthday, I got the two things that I actually picked um, I got an eyebrow pencil for my birthday, my friend Lauren got me some skincare um, and I got a sample with a magazine and I got I got a couple of different bits and pieces for my birthday basically that I will need to add on but essentially the makeup I think is going to jump up in my birthday because that Chantikai eyeshadow I think is worth about $48 and the NARS thing is worth about $28 so there's probably the best part of $100 getting added on this month or for July for last month technically when I add them on. I, th I think I thought I would have changed more than I have done by now so yeah. One of the things I've really realised is that this is not just going to end after a year, it's definitely going to have to go forward. In terms of like what I think is working for me going forward, you guys know I'm doing a Project 10 pan for 2018. I don't think that's really working for me because I'm kind of getting a bit bored of those products and I'm also feeling like I feel restricted into lifting those products every time I do my makeup because one of the other things I've realised is that I don't wear makeup on a daily basis and I'm okay with that, that's fine. But for the amount of makeup that I buy and the amount of money that I'm spending on makeup or was spending on makeup, like I need to be using it more than I am to justify that and I, I don't and I'm not really that fussed about making a, an effort to use it more and I'm not like... I don't think I'll ever be one of those people who can't leave the house without their makeup and I don't want to be like that so that's not really a problem but also the amount of stuff I have when that is my mentality is a bit of a problem because I'm never going to get through the amount of stuff I have which I was never going to get through it anyway but like it's really emphasised how much I've overspent and how much I've overbought because it's never ever going to all get used but how little of that actually gets used is really in perspective here because I have been using my uh, project pan items most of the times when I've been doing my makeup I've kind of got to a point where I'm slightly resenting it every time I pick up that blush or that eyeshadow so sometimes I'm really enjoying doing my makeup and not using those items so I don't think a long-term project pan is really hugely working for me I think what I'm going to do is do more short-term project pans I've sort of been doing sort of mini ones without documenting them just in my head like month to month being like oh could I use that this month or would if I start using that now will that be done by next month just to get it in with my reverse rouge total. So I am going to do a new project pan I'm going to film the intro after I film this which is going to be 9 before NY which is um, just 9 products that I'm going to try and make good progress with before I go to New York because when I go to New York as I said in the very first video I am going to let myself buy things. It will actually be quite interesting I think because I'm going to set a budget. There's going to be a budget in place. I'm going to have a look at what I've used and what I've not used and set a couple of rules about what I can and can't buy because there's definitely categories that I just cannot add to and that's like it's just non-negotiable I can't add to them and there are categories that I really shouldn't add to that I know I want to so I'm going to have to maybe limit like maybe I can have one eyeshadow palette and I have to pick one and that's all I can buy and there'll be a monetary value budget and everything has to come under that and yeah I'll talk more about that in my kind of pre-New York update whether that's the end of August or just before I go to New York if I do kind of a New York plan makeup rehab video or something but yeah so I'm going to do a new project pan that's just like a small small short term project pan and I think I know 12 Pans of Christmas was like an organised thing last year on YouTube. It was Jacqueline Levine, I think you pronounce it, that kind of ran it. So I don't know if you're kind of allowed to just join in with that because you want to, but I think I'll do some kind of a Christmas project pan. And I don't know how that will affect my overall project pan, but at the moment I'm pretty happy with where I am on most of those items. If I'm just, if I use them more between now and the end of the year, then great. And if I don't, like, I've still made a lot of progress on them, so... I don't know, I'll do a project pan update before I go to New York anyway to kind of update you about that. But yeah, what I'm realising is I don't think the long term project pan really works for me to be kind of married to certain items because I just don't feel, like I said at the start, I want to play about with my storage and I want to do like a lipstick a day and a palette a week and different challenges and I've not done any of that because I don't actually use makeup that much. So... You know, if I'm doing my makeup maybe three or four days a week out of seven, I'm having to use the project pan item. Short term projects are going to work better for me next year. I'm really excited about like sticking with this journey and I just, 
it makes me feel really sounds really really cliched but I feel quite powerful because I feel like I look at my my dressing table set up here and I'm like ah you don't control me anymore like I'm controlling you and that is such a good feeling um, and I'm really I'm really enjoying it so I'm really excited to go forward with next year but yeah next year is definitely going forward I'm not just going to be able to go back to just shopping I don't think I think that's too much of a danger zone for me but yeah as much as I've maybe learned a couple of lessons there um, so far in this year overall it's going really well and I'm so happy that I have done this because I feel so much as much as my collection hasn't halved in size which I really was hoping it would have done by you know this point in a year into not buying anything as much as I still feel like it's taking up so much space physically in my life I don't feel overwhelmed by it the way that I did before so I'm, I'm really really happy that I've gone down this path and that I've started this journey and I'm so determined to see it through and the other thing is I'm really enjoying when I'm not using my project pan items I'm really enjoying doing my makeup which I completely lost that I was just so focused on buying and owning things that it wasn't actually about using anything whereas now I'm actually enjoying doing my makeup again but yeah that is my kind of makeup rehab update in terms of the products that I've used up I'm going to film an empties I would repurchase and an empties I wouldn't repurchase video and um, because I've got quite a lot of empties from I think March was actually my last proper update where I showed you my empties so I've got like April May um, and June and then I think what I'll do is do a July and August update and I'll show you my July and August empties as part of that and then going forward it should just be a monthly like update and it should be back to normal but yeah thank you so much for sticking with me thank you for watching this very rambly video and yeah if you've got any oh I just want to address as well I've had some weird comments being like oh you must be in so much debt um I just want to address I'm not in any debt I am very privileged and very lucky in that my parents completely supported me throughout my time at university and I still live at home I live in my family home at the moment so I have not moved out I don't really have any bills the other thing is when this kind of really became an issue for me coincided with me graduating university and getting my first graduate job and you know my income soared from being a student relying on pocket money basically um, from my parents or like if I had like a summer job from doing that to having an actual full-time wage coming in like my income went up and my expenses were the same I was still living at home I had no bills to pay um, other than my, my phone like so I'm talking from a very privileged position I do not have any debt I was spending pretty much my entire salary every single month on this kind of stuff though. I was not using my money wisely and there were like so many better ways I could have been using that money but I'm not in any debt so thank you for your concern but if you are, if you're struggling with any kind of spending addiction and it's getting out of hand for you please go find professional help. I think if you've got a problem with makeup then social media in the kind of blogging community if you surround yourself with the right content which hopefully you would consider watching a video like this the right content but you know people who project pan and who shop their stash and who are into using what they have and are very selective about what they buy if you surround yourself with that content that's great it's like for me that has been a huge kind of impact in me is being like oh I'm not just surrounded suddenly by people who are always like this is new look at the swatch and it pretty and on to the next thing next day this is new look at the swatch and it pretty like I'm actually watching people who are really using their stuff and really you know take pride in like their empties and project pants and things like that and that has massively massively helped so if you've got a problem that is about makeup side of it um or you know an addiction in that sense like that's my number one tip is surround yourself with that kind of content but if you have an actual problem with money and debt this might help you in the long run to keep good behaviours going forward but if you've got a problem right now with debt please 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 go seek professional advice like there are there are loads of people out there who you know will will be able to give you about what to do if you are in debt or you're worried about money or your habit has kind of put you into a financially difficult position please do not rely on watching people like me 
on YouTube or Project Panners or whoever it is. If you've got a ma if you've got a money problem, please, 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 go find a professional. Don't rely on the YouTube blogging Reddit community for that. That's not what it's for. But yeah, now that I've said that, if you have any questions about anything, please leave them down below. Um, thank you so much to everyone for being so supportive um, so far in my kind of makeup rehab journey. I really, really appreciate it. And I will speak to you soon. Bye.